And um, yeah, with this, we go over to our next presentation. Um, it's uh, it's Andre who's already here on the screen, and uh, he will talk about the R2 cloud and the R2 server. Um, so it seems like there's two separate components uh, of this distributed ground station network system that he's developing. I would suggest to combine the name into R2D2 at some point. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really interested to, to hear more about it. The abstract was a bit short, so I hope your talk uh, is going to be a bit more um, enlightening. And uh, the presentation uh, is going to be loaded now. And then I hand over to you. Um, can you make yourself a moderator? No. Now, your presenter. So please right. go ahead. All right. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, OK, uh, next slide. All right, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Andre, and today I'd like uh, to talk on how to run open source project alone. Um, I'm a professional software developer, 15 years of experience in enterprise world. And uh, Arctic Cloud is actually my hobby project, which I run myself uh, for several years. And I don't want to give a lot of technical details on how it works and on a low level. Uh, I'd like to spend this uh, 12 minutes on maybe high level uh, design key points, uh, which prove to be working, uh, some not. So, and share this uh, experience with you. Uh, so, a couple of words about the project. So, yes, as, as you find out, yes, yeah, the R2 Cloud and R2 Server is a part of a client server architecture distributed project. And uh, this is distributed ground station network. Um, the R2 Cloud is a client and R2 Server is server. So simple. Uh, R2 Cloud is a fully autonomous and uh, application and, and can run independently from the server side. And it can do several things. For example, schedule satellite observations and record the IQ data from a satellite. Then it can demodulate data, decode the data, and it can provide uh, an interface, web interface, where you can look at the data and the API, REST API, which you can use uh, to download the data and do uh, some analysis maybe. And optionally, it can upload the data to the central server called auto server. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary, but uh, uploading to the server can provide some benefits. So currently, uh, auto server, with auto server, you can actually gather uh, observations from several base stations into the single web interface. So it's much easier to look at uh, uh, the results from several stations. And uh, you can store the observations for some time, quite a long time. Um, and also, you can share the data with the community. So, data shared uh, can, can be shared with SetNox, FanQ Warehouses, AMSAT Salem, Hat to Weather, uh, and many other projects. So, um, the single uh, telemetry data can be uh, sent to several projects which are interested in it. And uh, initially, uh, actually, I didn't plan to have a server site, central server site. Uh, I thought um, AutoCloud was supposed to work uh, on Raspberry Pi in some rural areas uh, and controlled remotely from the web interface. And uh, as it turned out, this stuff doesn't work really well, uh, mostly because um, default um, memory card is very limited so you can store unlimited amount of observations and if you even if you buy a bigger card or some external usb hard drive then it still will be limited uh, well with the central server you can actually upload the data and store the data in some uh, central blob service like amazon s3 uh, for uh, for a long time, it's very cheap, so that makes perfect sense. And secondly, 
the remote locations doesn't have Wi-Fi. So you have to set up some GSM uh, model which can uh, connect uh, to, um, to the internet. But with GSM, you can't configure port forwarding and you can't really access remote location from your home and uh, easily. Yeah, it's, it is possible, but uh, it's, it's not like plug and play thing which you can install in the wood and just forget for, for a year. So a bit complicated. And thirdly, um, if you use a central server, you can uh, minimize the traffic. So if you have a GSM modem, you can upload the data, upload uh, observation only once to the server, and the server can distribute it uh, between the interested parties. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so there I decided to have central server. Um, during the life cycle of a project, some uh, key features were added or removed. Uh, the design principles stayed the same, and uh, I'd like to uh, go over them in details maybe because uh, they have an interesting story. <laughs> so the key design principles are open source, KISS uh, principle, T tests and automation. Um, so the open source. Um, Out to Cloud is my hobby project, and um, I haven't had any experience in digital signal processing or satellite communications before. So it was good for me to have somebody who can review it, uh, and the only way to share the code is. Uh, share it with as big a community as possible. So that's why I chose open source as a primary uh, reason. Uh, the second reason is tooling, uh, because a lot of services, they provide uh, the services for free for open source projects. Um, and several years ago, it was GitHub, Travis, and Sonar Cloud for, they covered all my needs and um, they, they are still uh, really good at, uh, trying my projects and my infrastructure. Um, the second principle is keep it super simple, <laughs> I would say. Um, again, uh, when you run a hobby project, you are very passionate about it. You want to add as much as possible features and because they're really cool and especially when you run uh, something like RTL SDR, where you have access to uh, all radio waves and you can get a lot of kind of information. Um, but it turned out it's not possible to make all features with the same quality. So it's very important to focus on one uh, single primary goal of a project. So. And the primary goal can be defined as a single sentence which describes your project precisely. Um, and if it doesn't, then something needs to be changed about it. For example, R2 Cloud is a project uh, for, uh, is a, is a, R2 Cloud is a station for uh, decoding satellite data. Uh, that's it. So that's why uh, initially I supported airplane tracking and uh, uh, air, air balloons, etc. But I dropped that support uh, because of the single primary goal, and that uh, was a really good idea because uh, I had to cut off a lot of uh, functionality, what, which was not really uh, needed. Uh, and that's why maybe Arctic Cloud won't support um, audio communication with ISS, right? Because even the ISS is some uh, artificial uh, thing. It's not a real satellite. And I can't really decode the data. That's why uh, uh, only a very a limited, but a very fixed set of features it will support. Um, the next um, principle is tests. So uh, when you work, work on a project uh, uh, over the years, you add more and more features and uh, more and more features will require more and more testing and making sure that every single feature works well. And um, I'm the only developer in the cloud. Um, 
and I, I simply don't have time. And that's why I can afford manual testing. So I spent um, a lot of time doing automation and it proved uh, really working well. Um, I can add more and more features uh, continually um, uh, and not breaking the old ones. This is very important. And the complicated software require complicated uh, features. Um, Another biggest uh, design principle is automation, and uh, that's generally a good idea for any kind of project. Uh, but when you are low on resources and maybe run a big project with a small group, that's a must have. Um, so, for example, in Article, Article Cloud, I don't have any specific version of, of the application. When I'm commit, uh, commit into the GitHub, GitHub will notify Travis, and Travis will uh, run the test, uh, checks everything works, um, and if it does, everything works, then nothing can stop me from releasing it. Um, so I'm very confident that okay, I can release it, and then uh, Travis will publish uh, the artifacts onto APT repository, uh, where every client can actually download and install it. Uh, yeah, so um, that's that's about uh, automation and maybe Jenko principles. And they these principles work really well uh, during these years, and they help me um, adjust my um, target state of a project and focus on real important things. Um, during the last year, uh, I added at least uh, 50 satellites uh, alone. So uh, I, I was able to uh, download the, the data, acquire the data and decode the data and upload it. Um, the number of uh, number of stations is constantly growing over time. So uh, I think it's uh, really good. Uh, so other, other people think that it works and they can install it. Um, and uh, I have my own two base stations deployed. They're very simple, uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, Discone antenna. But with these two stations, I was able to get into top 50 uh, of Satnox contributors. Um, and I think that's a good achievement because I'm really testing things, uh, make sure that decoding works. Uh, and I still I got these uh, uh, results. So I think. Uh, Everything works fine here. Um, yeah, so I guess this is it. <laughs> um, I'm ready for questions and um, I'll be available in the virtual hangout uh, at the end of the day for informal discussion. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Andrew, uh, Andre, Andre, very, very good, very nice. And totally on time. My God, you really have rehearsed it. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, Fernando, do you have questions on the channels? If you don't mind, may I ask no. here? No, Fernando. Go ahead. Very nice. So it's Kirill again. Hello, Andrei. Um, I'm new to this satellite communications, and I was wondering in the decoding part of the project. I can imagine that the modulation is quite generic, like all satellites do it the same way, but I have a feeling that all satellites encode data differently. Like like the guys from the previous uh, from the previous presentation, they for example use uh, this uh, PUS protocols. So when you decoding, you kind of need to know that they use this. Uh, how how do you know how to decode? That's a tricky question uh, because some satellites, they uh, send frames in a generic format. For example, X.25 uh, uh, protocol frames. In that case, uh, I will just uh, get the binary data and upload it. Some satellites provide uh, the internal structure of the messages of the telemetry, like solar panels, voltage, and bus uh, voltage, etc. 
And for these satellites, I can get this byte array and cre create a JSON document with all the structures and the formats. Uh, it, the, the, the number of such satellites much smaller than the total overall satellites. Uh, that's uh, the reality, but still, yeah, uh, you have to do uh, decoding uh, for each individual satellite uh, and it might take time. Okay. So, for for example, as you know, we are now uh, working with this Tutsat satellite, and we will also use uh, PUS stack um, protocol of uh, stack of protocols, including PUS and some uh, TM frames. If we, for example, want to have decoding support by your project, how how can we do that? Like, uh, I contact you and we share the details. How do we do that? So I'm not really familiar with Pius. I've never heard about that before. So currently, we, I support IX.25 uh, framing and then IX100 framing and then um, CSP uh, CubeSat uh, space protocol uh, frames. So if your satellite is able to send them, uh, then you don't need actually do anything else apart from just adding uh, entries that NORAD ID this, uh, the TLE this, and you got the data. If you've got some weird framing, non-standard one, we have to develop it from scratch and add support uh, across all the stacks. Yeah, I, I see. I feel right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Andre, I have a question uh, coming from YouTube, but it's asking which are the project goals for 2021? Uh, uh, the project goals, well, as for 2020, uh, the primary goal is to add more satellites. That's never-ending story satellites burning up uh, they constantly launching so it's never-ending story the second thing is to ease the ad addition of the new satellites so currently i have to do a couple of releases of Arch cloud and Arch server everything is automated but it still takes some time so ideally i would uh, improve that thing and uh, as always i'm trying to um, optimize demodulators because the generic demodulators doesn't really work uh, well because the satellite is always moving they tumbling uh, they can um, there are a lot of noise uh, around so the there's never ending story about optimizing demodulators so i guess these three key things uh for 2021 is is a top priority for me There's also the question um, if so we talked you talked a lot about the R2 cloud and we see the GitHub uh, repository. How about the server part? Uh, where do I find that one? Uh, that's that, that's that's cloud source and mostly because yes, but it takes some time. So th there's some reasons and there are really good reasons to make it closed. First thing, uh, if you want, if you're running an open source project, you're spending a lot of time uh, making it secure, making it uh, well, structured properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If it's closed source, I can be more uh, free in the way how I do some things and just don't care about them. So, the, so you say the code is crap, the server part, <laughs> and you don't want to show it. <laughs> Well, well, like, well, like, well, like I, sh I, I can share it. I, I don't think anyone would. Read we we it have the discussion and really find... all, all over. I mean, we have this basically every year that people, um, if it's really the reason that you say that you're afraid that it doesn't look good or it's not working or it's not up to standards, I say, I mean, just the people will contribute and they will they will improve it for you if if you let them do it. Um, yeah, but yeah, th th that's the thing. It, it's partially, partially the code, and the partially that I'd like to focus on 
Outer Cloud. So, for example, I would like to people to come and contribute to Outer Cloud and approve uh, the satellites, the modulators, etc., uh, rather than working on the server side. Because server side is very simple, really simple. Uh, and the protocol between uh, the Outer Cloud and Outer Server is open. So you can go and implement yourself. Uh, at okay. Outer Server. Okay. No problem. I, I sent some hidden agenda there, uh, um, but maybe, okay, one last question from Fabian, because then we have to uh, go to the next presentation. So I've seen that you um, provide uh, very, very um, support uh, much of the new satellites in the last year. So uh, because you are using the J radio, um, you, you have to, uh, to do the, the whole work of, of writing the decoders uh, yourself. And by this, we, you, you have to do the same uh, what is also done in uh, GIA Satnox for, for Satnox decoders and also with the same what uh, uh, Diana Estavis is doing for uh, GIA satellites. Uh, do you think we can um, uh, find a way to to uh, collaborate on on this part? I've seen your your testing is really good, and for G, uh, J Radio, you mentioned the uh, automated testing, and uh, you have always uh, unit tests for for all satellites. So this is a part where you uh, your contribution is really great in comparison to, to others. Yeah, the, uh, I would really love to to merge our. Uh, our some decoders um, and just have a quick, uh, well, maybe open uh, um, discussion on how to do it properly. Because currently the G radio is, uh, well, call me from the old ages, but I prefer a very simple thing, um, right? Read the beat and just pass everything bit by bit rather than uh, provide some weird structures of how to pass the data. We can we can work it out how how it can be shared and maybe uh, improved. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, there's a, I know also about a lightweight uh, library uh, instead of uh, GNU Radio, um, and I have a lot of other questions. So I'm really looking forward to see you in the virtual hangout, um, and then we can discuss more. And yeah, and with this now we go to the uh, thank you, Andre. We go to the next uh, presentation. Okay.